or are we just going to say, well, we'll not preach the gospel to him because if he did believe, it would be too hard. And we'll not bring the reformed faith to that person. We'll let him lumber about in his Arminianism and false doctrine because he'd be booted out of his church and then everybody would think he was awful. So the minister must be willing to be blamed wickedly for divisions which necessarily come through the word that he preaches. Divisions in the world, divisions in the church, and especially here, divisions in families. To identify with the apostles in the apostolic gospel, so that you're called the scum and offscouring of the earth. Away with him, it's not fit that such a one should live. To be denounced like Elijah as a troubler in Israel for the truth's sake. You're just causing problems with your gospel. Go home. We don't want to hear it. It was all right and nice and peaceful before you came. To experience the grief and rejection of a Jeremiah. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me a man of strife and a man of contention in the earth. Jeremiah 15 verse 10. And this is what has to be faced and embraced by a minister of Jesus Christ who preaches the cross, which is always suffering and death. And this is what Martin Luther did. And this is part of the reason why he was used as a great reformer. He saw what the gospel was doing. And he embraced the nasty, hard, difficult consequences. He clasped the flame, as it were, and it was hurled against him by his enemies. You are dividing Western Europe. Things were peaceful here for hundreds of years. And Luther said, in effect, yeah, the gospel talks about that too. When the devil rules the household, he has all his goods nice and peaceful. Yeah. You are dividing Western Europe and the Turks are at the gates. You're going to split our ranks so that the Muslim hordes can come in through Southeast Europe and take Vienna and massacre us, put us all to the sword. And it's your fault because you preach this gospel and you divide so that our armies can't unite to repulse the enemy. And Luther did not quail under that attack. He said, no matter what wars, divisions, and strifes, no matter even if we're subjected to all the ignominies of the jackboot of the Islamic hordes, it's not my fault. And I'm going to preach the gospel and divide Europe and we're all massacred, so what? Because Jesus Christ said that he was come to send a fire on earth and he wanted it to be kindled. And it's my role to preach that no matter what happens, no matter what results, no matter what the consequences are. It's the will of Christ. It's the will of him who said, I am come to set <coughs> fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Believing and obeying this will of Christ, we then die to ourselves and embrace his cross and the baptism which with which he was baptized. We learn to count all things but done, that we may win Christ and be found in him, not having our own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of God through faith, that we might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for thy word, and we pray that thy word would separate us more and more from our sins and the world, and consecrate us to thee as thy friends. Forgive us, Father, because we're weak and sinful, and draw back so easily from hardship. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to Psalm 69. Psalm 69, verses 4 through 9. Here Christ is singing.
be with Christ, that he and we are hated without cause, and that we suffer loss and separation from our brethren, verse 8, because of zeal for the Lord, verse 9. Let's sing 4 to 9 of Psalm 69. Those men that do